Hello, everyone, and welcome to your update for the November 2021 Beetle Barometer. Before we get started, this is the first one of these we're doing. I want to give you a quick uh, primer on what the Beetle Barometer is. It's a comprehensive measurement of the overall health of the U.S. economy. We look at things like the housing market, the stock market, consumer spending, all those different things are put into um, a report and we send it out every single month. Now, the two people who make that report are with me today, Austin Stagman and Bill Windling. So we're gonna jump right into it. Austin, um, the Beetle Barometer this month for November is at a plus four score. What does that mean? So the Beetle Barometer uh, has seven different indicators. Uh, so the score can be as high as a plus seven or as low as a negative seven. So currently the score is plus four, which is pretty solid. Uh, there are a lot of things doing well in the economy right now. The, the stock market is doing well, manufacturing is doing well, volatility is low. So a score of plus four is pretty solid. Right, and, and one of the biggest things I feel like is affecting this number or affects the report overall is inflation. And we just got some new inflation numbers out. Um, and Austin, what do those numbers mean, the inflation numbers mean, and what are they? Great question. So inflation is its own indicator on the barometer, like you're saying, and that's measured by the Consumer Price Index or CPI. Uh, and what we'll do is look at that year over year. So we'll compare uh, and see what that basket of, of goods was in October of 2020, what it is in October of 2021, and see what that increase was. Um, and the most recent numbers that came out showed a 6.2% increase. So you can say inflation right now is about 6.2%. And that's the biggest inflation surge we've seen in about 30 years. Bill, what is that number then 6.2%? Is that a good number or a bad number? Should you be panicking yet? Well, uh, I think it's too soon to panic. Uh, and really, 6% is very high. Like Austin said, it's, it's the highest it's been in about 30 years. Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to stay at 6%, uh, but uh, we're probably going to see elevated inflation for the next, uh, at least the next few months. Is it going to be a few quarters? Is it going to be a couple of years? That remains to be seen. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think there's ever a reason to panic when it comes to the inflation numbers, uh, but definitely something to keep in mind is, you know, if inflation is this high, uh, you know, how can that impact the economy? Uh, especially if it's prolonged inflation. And, and really, the, the sweet spot's about 2 to 3%. If we can have inflation of 2 to 3%, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, when you think about prices going up at that rate, you're probably not going to change your buying habits as a consumer, as a business. You're going to continue with your plans. If you think inflation is going to go up 6% and stay there, that's probably higher than what you've been, been guessing would be the case. Uh, so if, if that ends up being the case, then all of a sudden, People are starting to think about: Do they need to change their plans? You know, they were going to buy a house, and you know, in three years down the road, maybe they buy it now, or maybe they they buy a car. What that can do is that can put a lot of pressure on the current supply uh, of these goods that people are thinking about buying and purchasing. And, and and you have a constrained supply, you have more prices going up. Uh, maybe more economic activity is happening now and less in the future. So then we have to deal with. Uh, the economy slowing down in the future because a lot of the, the demand is accelerated to today. Uh, that's not a good situation to be in. Uh, however, a worse situation to be in is if we had deflation, because in a deflationary economy, businesses, consumers think that costs are going to be going down in the future, so they don't do anything today. There's no economic activity today, uh, and that can kind of snowball in itself. Uh, things slow down. They think things are going to continue to slow down. Uh, so the good news is we're nowhere near deflation. The bad news is the current inflation numbers are elevated. And if they stay elevated, it could have some, some impact on the economy here, uh, here in the next probably six to nine months. Bill, are there any positives coming out of the inflation number? Does anyone benefit from, quote unquote, higher inflation? Uh, well, I think when you have high inflation, it's not so much are you going to be able to benefit from it? Uh, it's going to be, are you going to be able to withstand any, any, any negative consequence of it? Uh, if you think about higher inflation, maybe you're thinking about companies that are selling goods and they're able to raise their price to, to sell their goods. Uh, yeah, but their costs probably went up. 
And you can go all the way down to a baseline scenario of maybe you're thinking about uh, commodity prices. And, and so commodity prices are going up. So whatever companies are able to extract that commodity or produce that commodity, they can sell them at higher prices. But the, their cost of doing that have probably also gone up. So really, when you're in an inflationary environment, kind of think about how are costs going up for, for consumers and, and businesses. But with businesses, if they can pass those price increases on to their customers uh, with, with the goods and services they provide, then they can withstand the effect of inflation. And eventually, inflation is going to come back down uh, and get closer to a normal level. Uh, but you know, for us, and we're thinking about what's going to impact our clients and their portfolios, it really comes down to, are the businesses able to absorb those costs and pass them on to their, their clients and customers? If so, they're probably in good shape and, and that should bode well for stocks. If they're not able to, then you need to take another look at the, the profitability of those companies and, and determine if they're going to be impacted. And, and maybe uh, that's, that's an area you might want to avoid for as long as inflation becomes an issue. And today, when we talk about inflation, you can't get more than two sentences without also seeing the words supply chain. So talk to me a bit, Bill, about the supply chain and how that's being affected and how it may be affecting the barometer. Right. So when you, when you hear the, the term supply chain, that's really talking about how are goods able to get from one place to another? And, and maybe it's goods going coming from China to a manufacturer here in the U.S. where they're going to do something else with it before they pass it on. Or maybe it's coming from a company in the U.S. and going to, to their customers uh, or maybe going to a retail store where we go and buy them. Uh, so when you hear about supply chain disruptions, what we're saying is that it's just taking longer for goods to go from point A to point B. And where you can see that showing up in the Beetle barometer, most, most specifically is with the inflation number, and that's the consumer price stability indicator. You see it right there, and it's causing higher inflation because goods are tougher to get. The people that have the goods can charge a little bit more for those goods, and that's being reflected in a lot of the inflation numbers. Where you're not necessarily seeing it in the barometer, but it is having an effect with the economy is with manufacturing activity. Manufacturing activity is strong. New orders are strong. They could be even stronger if we didn't have these supply chain disruptions that were kind of slowing things down. And, and I think that's, that's kind of a good news, bad news. The bad news is we could be doing more right now on, on the manufacturing side. But the good news is that where we're behind, a lot of that we're still going to get to. Uh, so you know, are, are there any economic activities that are being postponed now that are just gonna disappear? You know, kind of think about maybe a vacation. You know, if people can't take a vacation today, you know, a lot of times they don't just double up the next time they can take a vacation. They just start at that point, take their vacation and proceed forward as they normally would. Uh, so there's some ec economic activity that will disappear. A lot of it, though, is still going to happen. So if, if you're renovating your home and you can't get to it right now because of labor, maybe the labor shortage is there and, and your contractor can't get to it, or maybe there's some supplies that you're waiting on, you're still going to renovate your home. It just may happen six to 12 months from now rather than in the next month or two. Right. Very good. Austin, what role does the stock market and its performance play in the barometer? Well, just like uh, inflation is an indicator on the barometer, the stock market performance is also an indicator on the barometer. Currently, we have a positive rating for stock market. Um, and that is mainly because in October, uh, we saw a nice rally in the S&P 500. Uh, it was up 7%, which is the best month so far in 2021. Uh, S&P 500 is up um, about 43% over the last 12 months. Uh, but October's returns were really fueled by strong corporate earnings, positive economic reports. Uh, we're seeing vaccinations increased, um, interest rates are remaining low. So there are a lot of factors fueling the returns in October. So stock market is looking pretty good currently. Good. Overall, like we said, a plus four this month for the barometer. I'll ask you both, Bill, first, what do you see on the horizon for the next month or so for the barometer and the overall outlook? Yeah, I think everybody's got their eyes on inflation to see is that going to settle back down or is it going to remain elevated you know, for the future? Uh, that's something to keep an eye on. I don't have the answer to that, uh, 
but that's definitely something important to keep an eye on. And then I would go back to what Austin was just talking about with the stock market. Stock market is a great leading indicator. People are buying stocks today because they think the profitability of those companies going forward in the future is going to be strong. If you start to see the market going down, that might be an indicator that uh, people's confidence with the future profitability is less. So that's something else to, to keep an eye on. Where do we see the barometer? You know, say next month, what kind of a score? Probably similar to a plus four would be my guess. Austin, anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I agree that I, I would say if I had to guess, probably about a, a plus four, but there are a lot of variables in the short term that could affect that one, as Bill mentioned, obviously inflation. Uh, there are a couple other variables outside of the barometer that could affect scores of the barometer, uh, such as the Federal Reserve uh, announcing that they're going to start tapering soon. Um, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell is up for reappointment here in a couple of months, so that could have an effect on, on the stock market and other parts of the economy. So there are a lot of variables in the short term that can affect the score, but uh, given the knowledge that we have now, I don't see a whole lot changing um, for next month's score. So probably a plus four. Very good. And if you want to learn more, you can go over to BeetleFinancial.com.